beleza? Marlos Greenlock mais uma vez aqui para falar sobre o episódio de hoje do The Basic. E hoje nós vamos trazer uma questão fundamental, uma dúvida que aflige a humanidade desde o início dos tempos. Algo bem filosófico, então se prepare. A pergunta de hoje é, se não transforma, é Transformer? Não, God! Não, God, please, não! 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 Respondendo a essa pergunta, eu queria mostrar esse tipo de transformação. Ah, sim. E... E esse tipo de transformação aqui. Então nós temos vários tipos ao longo da história dos Transformers. Hoje nós vamos aprender tudo o que há sobre esse princípio básico, a transformação. E óbvio, se você está aqui no canal, não se esqueça de curtir, dar aquela curtida gostosa, maravilhosa. Se inscreva no canal, verifique se você está inscrito, porque volta e meia o número de inscritos do canal oscila. Sempre para baixo, porque o YouTube dá aquela retirada na galera. E também, verifique se o sininho está ativado. Então, nesse momento, aparece esse aviso aqui. Então, vamos prestar atenção nele. Prestar atenção, beleza? Não esqueçam de comentar e também de compartilhar. Compartilha com a sua galera aí, para a gente ter um engajamento bem maior e melhor no, no canal. E veja, o vídeo da semana passada melhorou bastante e agradecemos. Então, novamente, lembre-se que a nova Cybertron tem um grupo no Facebook, tá? Tá aqui o nome. E também, segunda-feira é dia de Basic, então anote aí na sua agenda, tá bom? Um abraço, valeu galera! This week we're really getting down to the basics with a look at the concept that gives the Transformers their name. Transforming. The ability to change shape is the defining attribute of the Cybertronian race and enables them to transform from a robot into some kind of alternate mode. These alt modes are most often vehicles or animals. But Transformers are endlessly varied in form and can turn into unconventional objects of all shapes and sizes. There are usually two main purposes for transformation. Utility, why drive a vehicle when you can be a vehicle, and disguise, allowing a Transformer to hide in plain sight as an unassuming machine or creature, sometimes even using holographic drivers to further the illusion. Some Transformers, either through natural ability or some form of upgrade, can assume multiple modes in addition to the normal two, can change their size as well as their shape, or can even split their bodies into multiple forms simultaneously. A Transformer's alternate mode is often tied to their personality, their function, or their place in society, but it's not a fixed attribute. A Cybertronian can change their alt mode by reconfiguring the living metal of their body using data scanned from other subjects, an ability that comes in especially useful on alien planets, where they can copy the forms of native machines or life forms and operate as robots in disguise. When transforming was introduced in the original Transformers series in the 1980s, it wasn't presented as a natural ability the Cybertronian race had been born with, and both the Marvel comic book and the original Transformers animated series told different stories about how the technology was invented. According to the first issue of the comic book, transformation was invented by the Decepticons before the war. They modified their bodies to convert into powerful war machines and weapons, and used these new forms to launch their first attack on the Autobots, who then copied the technology in order to fight back. In the cartoon, on the other hand, transformation was invented by the Autobots during the war. 
Not built for combat and no match for the Decepticon's superior strength and firepower, the Autobots instead fought using stealth, devising the ability to transform as a means of disguising themselves so they could strike at their enemies when they weren't expecting it. The cartoon explored the mechanics of transformation a little more than the comic, establishing that a Transformer's ability to transform was controlled by a mechanism within their body called a transformation cog, or a transforming cog, without which they couldn't change shape. While Japanese original sequel series The Headmasters showed the struggles of Transformers learning how to transform, illustrating the effort and concentration the process required as bots got stuck between modes when they tried to convert for the first time. And of course it was also the cartoon that made famous the iconic transformation noise, which has been used again and again down through the franchise's history. <laughs> In keeping with the idea that transformation wasn't a natural Cybertronian ability, changing alternate mode was generally not presented by classic media as something that a Transformer could do on their own, instead requiring external machinery to rebuild their body. This was most famously displayed when the Transformers first came to Earth and had to be reconstructed with new native alternate modes by the Autobot's computer using data it had scanned from Earth's machines. However, towards the end of the decade, a new third origin for transformation was revealed in the pages of the United Kingdom's version of the Marvel comic. Retconning the first issue's telling of events, this story stated that the Transformers had indeed been created with the ability to transform by Primus, the God of Light, who specifically gave them this power to mimic the abilities of his enemy, the Dark God, Unicron, who could convert from metal planet to huge robot. Transformation underwent an upgrade in 1996's Beast Wars. By the time of this series, set centuries after the original, Cybertron had undergone a technological quantum leap that allowed the Transformers to convert their bodies into organic forms as well as mechanical ones, enabling them to authentically replicate the outward appearances of living creatures, though they still required external mechanisms to scan for animal DNA and modify their bodies for them. When teams of Maximals and Predacons travelled back in time to prehistoric Earth, they were able to use these organic-skinned modes to shield their robotic components against the planet's dangerous levels of Energon radiation. Unlike their ancestors, this new generation of Cybertronians had onboard computers in their bodies that automated the process of transformation for them, which they triggered with a spoken command code. Cheater! Maximize! Megatron! Terrorize! In the 1999 sequel series, Beast Machines, these computers were lost after the Maximals were reformatted into revolutionary new techno-organic forms. Beast flesh and transformer metal fused at the cellular level, and like their ancestors, they had to learn how to transform all over again. It was in between these two series that the 1998 Japanese spin-off, Beast Wars II, became the first Transformers cartoon to introduce the idea of Cybertronians having built-in scanning and replication capabilities, able to scan an alternate mode and reformat their bodies on their own. Soon after, Beast Machines also independently introduced this idea, establishing that a planet-wide upgrade had integrated scanning technology into every Transformer's body. Following the introduction of this concept, virtually every new Transformers continuity in the 21st century has depicted the power to scan and change alternate modes as a built-in ability of the Cybertronian race, perhaps most prominently showcased in the live-action film series, in which Transformers have repeatedly changed modes as quickly and casually as a human might change their clothes. The only notable exception was 2007's Transformers Animated, in which the Decepticons possessed the built-in ability, but the Autobots still required external mechanisms to reconfigure themselves, as in classic media. 
Transformation cogs, rarely mentioned since the original cartoon, were prominently reintroduced in 2010's Transformers Prime, under the abbreviated name T-Cogs, and were established to not only control transformation, but to also be the mechanism responsible for scanning and adapting Transformers' bodies to new modes. The origins of transforming weren't really explored in any new series during the 2000s, but the general implication across the board was that, as in the Marvel Comics' Primus origin story, it was a natural ability that the Cybertronian race had always had. In the 2010s, Hasbro expanded on this idea while developing the new Aligned continuity, of which Transformers Prime was part, and devised a definitive modern origin story for transformation. According to this story, transforming originated with Amalgamous Prime, one of the first 13 Cybertronians created by Primus in Cybertron's primordial past. A mercurial jokester, Amalgamous was the ninth member of the group to be created, and the first and only one with the ability to transform. Amalgamous wasn't limited to two modes. He had no fixed form and could assume any shape he wanted, his body constantly shifting and changing from one minute to the next, an ability Primus had conveyed upon him via his personal artifact of power, the Transformation Cog. The Thirteen Primes were responsible for igniting the Well of All Sparks, the life-giving fount from which the rest of the Cybertronian race would be born. Amalgamus submitted the pattern of the transformation cog to the Well, making it so that all Cybertronians who would come after him would have cogs of their own, granting them a diminished version of his shape-changing abilities and an alternate mode already encoded into their genetic makeup from the moment they came online. Initially, the Cybertronians weren't aware of their ability to change shape until the alien Quintessons came to Cybertron and taught them how to transform as part of a plan to ingratiate themselves with the Transformers and conquer the planet. The Aligned Continuity story also introduced the idea that transformation was tied to social standing on Cybertron and was the root cause of the war itself. In the days before the war, corrupt leadership on Cybertron resulted in the planet operating under a caste system, in which the alternate mode a Transformer was born with locked them into a certain job and societal class. The prejudice and inequality propagated by this system would ultimately lead to Megatron forming the Decepticons as a revolutionary army to topple the corrupt regime and seize power for himself. These themes of alternate mode being connected to social injustice, in turn leading to the rise of the Decepticons, would go on to be featured in multiple Transformers series in the 2010s, influencing the stories of Transformers Cyberverse, War for Cybertron, and most notably IDW Publishing's comic books, which explored the system in more detail and gave it the name Functionism even offering a look at a dystopian alternate universe where it was never dismantled. In terms of real-world history, the Transformers were not the first transforming robot toys. That honour belonged to Brave Raideen, released by Japanese toy company Popey in 1975, based on the title character of the anime of the same name, a robot created by an ancient civilization who transformed into a bird-like aircraft and several other lines of reconfigurable robot toys, like Popey's Machine Robo and Takara's Diaclone and Microchange, would see release in Japan before Hasbro decided to import the latter two and turn them into the Transformers in 1984. And they weren't even the first transforming robots released in the US either, with Tonka notably importing Machine Robo to create GoBots and beating Hasbro to the shelves by several months. But the Transformers were the toys that turned shape-changing robots into a phenomenon in the Western world, defeating the GoBots at retail and inspiring countless imitators, to the point that Transformer has practically become cultural shorthand for any robot that can turn into something else. It's precisely for this reason that, in the 21st century, Hasbro doesn't actually like to use the word transform to describe what Transformers do anymore. 
Today, toy packaging and marketing uses the word convert instead, which helps the company to protect their trademark on the name Transformers by preventing the word from becoming overused and genericized. But let's face it, convert and roll out doesn't quite have the same ring to it. And those are the basics on transforming. I'll look at related concepts like triple changing and size changing and functionism in their own videos someday. For now, leave a comment down below about how, if you could transform, what your alternate mode would be. Like and subscribe for more Transformers history and lore, and help the series to keep going by supporting it on Patreon.